can you really stop water from freezing by burying it in the snow over there behind the teardrop? Well, it's 11 degrees here tonight and we're gonna find out pretty quickly. So you guys know there is no better feeling than having that teardrop hooked up, ready to get out of this hustle and bustle of town. So today I'm just gonna share with you, I'm gonna exhaust my entire list of tips and tricks around how we stay warm when camping. And these are the same tips I use in the summer, spring, and fall, even though it is winter and it's in the teens today. These can be used anytime, so let's get out there. Bye bye city. Hello beautiful Alaska. So first, before you get to your campsite, I stop at the closest gas station because your car is the biggest heater you're carrying around with you. Um, it's just nice to know as a backup, if you're stuck out for a week, you have this giant heater that's really efficient and can get you warm quick. Got some sheep up here I wanna show you guys. If I get to the campsite and my core is not warm, I struggle all day getting it back. And so I will put on my snow pants and my boots about 10 minutes before I get to camp. And then I'll jump back in this, crank up the heater like I'm losing weight to weigh in for wrestling or something. And that's gonna bring my core way up. And then when I get out of the car, I just feel pretty good. And I don't need the gloves, I have better dexterity. And then as my core starts slowly coming down, I put on gloves and things like that. So all the clothes I have under here are all wicking clothes and that's so if I did get my core too high and I started getting too physical and brought up a sweat, I'm not going to have any issue with that cold coming from being moist and, and wet. So fire is your friend in terms of keeping you warm. So what I do now, I'm just gonna throw a bunch of wood on here, stack it up, put the kindling in, and just get it ready so tonight when it's dark, I'm not fumbling around trying to light this and struggling at that point. So you've seen this one, right? This is our light speed instant up tent. We like to bring a small shelter in cold weather and that's because it doesn't take much to heat the space. So if we don't wanna be in the teardrop and we just wanna enjoy the views, a little buddy heater fills the space pretty quickly. Um, you know these are designed for showers and bathrooms, but we can fit our whole family in here with the tables and chairs. Uh, so it's a pretty good setup for both summer and winter camping. Okay, let's settle this right here. How do you keep water from freezing out here? Can you really bury a water jug in the snow and it'll stop it from freezing in these temperatures? Well, today it is 11 degrees Fahrenheit at the low point. I think it's in the teens right now. Let's see if this is an urban myth or not. I probably should have turned it upside down so it doesn't freeze. Uh, water freezes from the top down. So turning it upside down, if a little bit of it freezes, uh, you'll be able to drink that top water. So when looking for a place to set up the fire, 
I'm really looking for a big boulder. That way it can reflect the heat towards me and it kind of absorbs that heat during the night and lets it off from the boulder. Uh, but nothing here today, so this is just kind of an open air fire. So I'm gonna go back and get the galley prepared because food is key to staying warm out here. It's always curry with us, isn't it? That's basically all we eat in the Playing With Sticks family. <laughs> all right, time to get that rice back up and warmed. Tossing them in oil. Oil's always a fun thing to keep uh, from freezing out here. Round two, guys. I am starving tonight. But there's a purpose behind this too, right? Calories are a unit of heat. You guys all learned this in science, right? So the more calories you intake, the warmer you're going to be. This is energy. And how it works with camping is you want to double up on the calories. You want to cheat on your diet. This is that time. You can use this as your excuse. When you go to bed, your body's going to be digesting this through the night. And that means it's working, it's creating energy, and it gives off heat as a byproduct. So you're going to feel warm. Uh, I like to do you know, a big meal before bed. And then I even bring in like an energy bar with me if I get cold in the middle of the night. I'm getting up, doing some push-ups, some sit-ups, eating that energy bar to start that digestive process again. And you wouldn't believe how much your core will get back up. I gotta quit talking, I gotta start eating. It's already getting cold. Okay, water is a whole nother beast. So food, keep it in your body, keep you warm. Water, when there's excess of it, your body has to heat that water in your bladder and it causes you to get cold. So my suggestion for you is before you go to bed, make sure you get outside here, go to the bathroom, alleviate yourself. When you come back in, that makes it so now you don't have to let out that hot air in the middle of the night. And just keep just enough water in your body that you're pleasantly you know, hydrated, but not enough that your body has to spend extra energy warming that up. I can always tell when it's getting cold because the butane will stop working and then I have to switch over to the matches. <laughs> so just a little tip, don't bring butane when it gets too cold. Same thing, you'll have issues with propane, you'll have issues with your butane stoves. Um, propane works, just keep it full. Once they start getting on the uh, empty end, just switch it out for a new one because that's when you have issues when they're getting low. Okay, now for the gear. So for me, the first thing to get cold out here are my feet. Um, these are down boots. These are the Baffin boots. If you're somebody who has to get up and pee in the night, regardless of how much you drank, uh, it's just how your bladder works. These are great because they have thick soles so you can walk on rocks, walk on the ice. The ones I've been really liking lately, I purchased these from China. It takes forever to get here. It took like two to three months, but I like them because they're very compact. They fold down into nothing for storage, but they feel more like socks in the night uh, versus a boot, and they give me a ton of warmth. The next thing is also down. We have fallen in love with down blankets. So this is the Kelty Bestie blanket. I don't know how many of you own this. So we, I, have a bit of a blanket obsession, and May told me I could not buy any more blankets for our house. So I saw this at Bass Pro maybe two, three years ago, and I was like, I want it. I want this blanket, but she's gonna kill me. So I picked it up, 
Luckily, she fell in love with it. I have fell in love with this. Um, it's a very, very thin down bank blanket, and it's very small. This is, it's hard to see, but this is as wide as it is, and even length isn't that long. So not only can this not cover all of us, it can barely cover one person. Um, but it's, it really is great in so many ways. We use this inside our sleeping bags. We use this sitting around the campfire. We take this with us everywhere. We use it at home. Hey, it's Drew from the future. It is the next morning and tomorrow when I wake up in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything I did to stay warm last night in the teardrop trailer. Man, this feels like I'm in some like Hollywood movie set. So I just wanna to talk to you about two more tips before jumping into the teardrop. One, make sure you pee before getting in there. We already talked about that. And number two, Typically, I go and exercise. So a night like tonight at 12 degrees, I'm just gonna walk around. But if it's colder than that, I'm doing jumping jacks, I'm jumping up and down, and that's gonna get my core up. And as I get into the teardrop, even though it's cold in there, I won't notice it at first. But as I get in there, my body temp will start heating up the cabin of it and it'll all just kind of acclimate. So by the time I calm down and my body is not putting out all that heat, the space will be heated and everything feels pretty good. Now, the one thing I will mention before getting in there and talking to you some more, before you get out on a cold day, make sure you check your subfloor and see if it's letting in cold air. If it is, I suggest a mattress pad that has some sort of R value stating basically that it's stopping cold air from coming up to you. You guys remember this hole? Well, last night I uh, monitored the temperature. We hit 11 degrees, maybe a little colder. I'll have to check on the uh, internet when I get home. Let's see if this water froze, huh? goodness maybe you guys already knew this but I think this is like one of the coolest tricks there is out there there is no ice in this I don't know how I can get this so you guys can hear it let me put it up to the mic oh yeah So now that I have a little light, I'm gonna show you guys the gear I used last night in the teardrop to keep me warm. So in, the, so in the teardrop, when I'm solo camping, I try to go as basic as possible. So typically I'm sleeping with mummy bags. I warm up some water so I can heat up my sleeping bag. And so typically most people would use a Nalgene bottle. I'm old school, so my mom raised me on this rubber bottle. I used to like not having this insulated sleeve because I liked the heat that came off the rubber. But what I found is if you don't use this insulation, the heat dissipates in like one to two hours. But if you put this on, it will make it through almost the entire night. Um, and then if you put this in the right spot, typically you need to put it near a major artery, so your femoral artery. Uh, I like it just down at my feet. That's even enough warmth for me. Lately, I have been finding that I love the freedom to move around, not being so constricted by the shape of the mummy bag. So last night what I did, I cheated and I used my electric blanket. Um, if you haven't seen our electric blanket video, I'll link that in the description. I put the electric blanket on the bottom. I put one of these puffy blankets on me on top to hold in the nice warmth. And then I put my thick wool blanket on top of that to just make sure none of the warmth is getting into the cabin. It's all staying in my nice little cocoon. Uh, other than that, it's really just layers. And layers are interesting because, let me get in here and talk to you guys. Layers are interesting because in a mummy bag, the science, <laughs> science says that you should only wear one layer. And that's because you're supposed to have so much of an air bubble around you so that can heat up. 
Uh, so it's all subjective. You know, kind of play with how many layers you wanna wear in there and try it out. For me, I start kind of heavy in my layers and then I peel them off as I sleep. And then in the morning, instead of putting layers on again, I just crank up the heater in the very first, uh, you know, 20, even 30 minutes sometimes in the morning and that makes me super toasty warm, kind of excited to get back outside again. Um, the heater video too, if you haven't seen that, we have a whole video on different electric heaters, ones that consume very low, low electricity, so they work pretty good for small camper life. So it's about time for me to go play. If you are new to winter camping or a veteran and just wanting to learn new things, we have a playlist here about finding great winter campsites, electric blankets, heaters, everything to keep you warm. Stay safe, stay warm everyone, and we'll see you in the next episode.